Hey, good morning. It is Ask a Phyllis. And uh, first I wanted to explain what a Phyllis was. A Phyllis is the newest part of a branch or a plant, the new growth. It's called a Phyllis, or Phyllis, excuse me. And um, I was grateful for my father naming me that. And it has suited my love for learning. And um, I call my first fetish learning about ourselves. Um, so the question I got was a general question about purpose and timing of life, but I really wanted to address the purpose question because it is um, one that I have spent my life uh, looking at and having the experience of early on in my life understanding, or not understand, excuse me, seeing a vision that uh, spoke to me of my purpose and um, having the frustration of, well, what does that mean? <laughs> what do I do with that? Um, and I've held that vision for 40 some years now. It's been a interesting kind of a backwards way of looking at it. Having the vision doesn't always make it easy. And so being in a position of not knowing what to do is also a frustration, please, uh, to be. And it usually comes up when we are at a when we're not in the flow of our lives meaning you know after a breakup after a job ends after you know a shift or someone dies or a hit of depression hits and you start questioning it's that questioning why am i here what am i doing this question all of a sudden is like a little bubble of them come up and you have to look at them and they're uncomfortable but they're good they're good things. It's it's like gas bubbling up. <laughs> you needed that belch. <laughs> you need to look and see what um, what's come up for you. What has brought these questions? What has brought this uncomfortable feeling in the body? That you know you're out of flow. Instinctually, you know you're out of flow. And being in flow is important. Um, and I tell my clients, don't make decisions when you're out of flow. And you're not in a good mood. Because you usually make the bad decisions. You know, like when you know you're not supposed to eat another piece of pizza, but you do it anyway. When you know you can't afford those pair of shoes, but oh Lord, they're beautiful. You'll make a way. You'll block out what you know to be true and go with the decision of, I want it now. You know, we will give in to our cravings. Because we're human. That's what we do. So we're cool like that. So it is when we are in flow, though, that we are less susceptible to our baser, weaker natures, when we can do what's best for all of ourselves. And that is an important place to stay, and I call it the creative continuum. And that uh, is why I started the Patreon circle, so that I could focus on that. Excuse me talk about that creative continuum that makes us get shit done that's what i've learned and jordan peterson has just talked about this recently as well it's about it's only the 20 percent who succeed the 80 percent who flaunt around or take jobs or never quite ever get to our heart's desire and do our life's purpose because we it's hard not hard in the sense that um it can't be done It's hard in the sense that we have so many obstacles we see in front of it that we never get to it. And we're lazy. We are a species that has laziness built into our DNA. So if we are going to stop self-sabotaging ourselves, then we have to get in that creative flow that makes it joy for us. And so when you know what that joyous spot is, And if it is just playing games and vegging out in front of a TV, then enjoy. Enjoy. Why should I be the one to tell you you're wrong? Enjoy. You are letting your body have its bliss. So that's your call. Run for it. And if you're creative, though, is an expression that comes within. It has to go outward then run with it and that takes more effort and again only that 20 percent of us get it done but it is a be about 
it is to be about following your bliss, baby. Because in that joy, in that creative flow, the magic happens, the manifestations happen. Because you're focused in the energy that it needs to happen with. We are a creative species. I've called this planet the gods and goddesses of the planet because we are all creatrix. We're all, we all have the ability to manifest. We all have 12 strands of DNA, not just two. It's our conscious awakening that is opening up those other strands of DNA. And children now are being born with the third one already awakened. Or they can see it in the, all the funny tests they do. <laughs> I've forgotten the name of them now. The genetics work. So it is um, a cool time to be alive. We are awakening. And at the same time, yeah, we're going to war. It's going to get ugly. Lots of people are going to die. And a lot of people are going to ascend. So it's not about whether you live or die in these skin suits. It is about, did you come to learn what you came to do when you played this game. I take the game theory of life that it, we are all here for experience. We all chose to incarnate here. You chose your parents. You chose the day you were born. Now, life maps is all about that. Uh, let's look at what we chose. <laughs> you can know some information if you know a map, right? You use Google all the time. You use Google Maps or Wave or one of those other ones to get you where you're going. Because someone's been there before and they've laid it out. Same with the time you chose to incarnate. You chose your birth time. You may have been forced out, but you chose that too. <laughs> the stubbornness. And now, make me come out. So it is um stuff we probably should know about. And I would recommend, there's lots of resources. I kind of serve as a reference librarian and will do the research for you and do four mini reports for you and just let you look at different aspects. Given that there's over 40 astrological systems on the planet, that's a lot of information that we have blown off simply by looking at, at two sentences on a newspaper daily. It's just one type of astrology. There's much to be known. And look at the map when you're lost look at the map it's kind of the easiest way to get unlost get in a space of where you want to be that could be stilling your heart and mind for a memory that felt good or a future scenario that feels good and meditate on that be there and then ask the questions that's the time to ask the questions and let the magnetics of your heart for a gratefulness for an answer come to you that way. If you believe life is going to be hard, then you're correct. If you believe you can find better ways to live on this planet, then you too are correct. So how you control your matrix, your thought processes, is all up to you now. Mainly because you heard me tell you. <laughs> to whom much is given, much is required. And when you have the information, it's now your right to use it and practice it. I want to give you good toys that you can use to win this Matrix game. I mean, why play to lose? I mean, really, come on, play to win, baby. And we said, I'm in it to win it. So, finding purpose is just, oof. You know, and it's easy. It's what you love. They make it simple. <laughs> it's, it's not difficult. It's what you love. Yeah, it's your purpose. Do that. You'll learn all the lessons you need to learn along the way. And if you want the maps, check me out. The four maps I, like we can lay out for you. It's a lot of information. It'll set you back and go... It raises the bar of your conscious awareness, period. So, start there with purpose. Feel good, see it, ask the question, what feels good? How can I make a living of that? Go do it. Alright, y'all. Namaste. Happy Thursday. <laughs>